Whether you have a diagnosis or not, I don't care. I'll teach you how to find what's causing your health struggles using the blood work you already have right here on this podcast, but also in my new book, Why Are My Labs Normal? Go grab it on Amazon and let me know you love it and appreciate the knowledge by leaving a review for the book and for this podcast. This podcast is sponsored by my favorite supplement companies, Systemic Formulas and My Bio. Come join me inside their private Facebook group for practitioners called Systemic Formulas Clinical Nutrition. For everybody else, go join them on Instagram at Systemic Formulas. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast with me, Dr. Kylie. My guest today is from Europe. In fact, she is the top international stylist across the world. And you need to go follow Tracy on Instagram because if you want to up your game, your style game, go follow her. She's a rock star. So Tracy, welcome on. Thank you so much for having me on, Dr. Kylie. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I mentioned your Instagram, but I didn't know which what to tell them about your Instagram page. So will you... Tell them where to go. Yes, my Instagram page is Tracy Jeske Official, so T-R-A-C-I-J-E-S-K-E Official. And there you'll get lots of tips. So I help women 50 and beyond up-level their glamour game so they can unapologetically live and create their most beautiful, stylish second act ever. I want women to be bold, stand out in a crowd, looking and feeling absolutely fabulous while doing so. And just drop the mic. Boom. (laughs) Like I said, if you want to up your style game, and most importantly, when you up your style game, it's about confidence. Yeah, it is. It's about confidence and being who you are. It is. Like as women age, it's unfortunate, but there are so many rules to style. And so a lot of women really struggle with what they can or cannot wear. And there's so much more to being 50 and wearing white shirts and khaki pants. Like you can literally wear anything. So, you know, and if you give me, you're watching our video here, (laughs) Tracy rocks it guys, go follow her Instagram page. She rocks it and she's going to help you rock it at any age. Yeah. Any age. It is important. Your style is a way to say who you are without saying a word. And that's my favorite quote by Rachel Zoe. And it is so, so true. How we express ourselves, how we show up in the world. People see that we're our best business card ever. So before we even say a word, people are looking at what we wear and they remember us by what we're wearing. And then the business card comes afterwards. But that's a whole other story. Yeah. If, the, if people even print out business cards now, it's just, you know, <laughs> follow me on Instagram. Okay, Tracy, we're going to talk about a very hot topic today, eating disorders. Yes. And I, I love this topic because it affects so many women and men internationally there's no boundaries to this stuff and it's a lot of times secret yeah no idea when someone's struggling yeah it is there's also like this there's a lot of shame I had a lot of shame I suffered for over 20 years so I started when I was you know in my early teens I had I was very much the perfect child I wanted to be perfect for everyone I wanted to make my family happy my mom and dad happy I had a wonderful childhood And I do not blame my parents. This has nothing to do with them. It's me. I was so sensitive and so insecure and growing and my body changing. I literally loathed everything about myself. I wanted to be like those magazines, like those girls in the magazines on 17. Maybe you're too young, but you know, they were just like, so, you know, the cute boyfriends and, you know, I was never thin. I, I was very thin when I was little, but as I hit puberty, I just kind of gained weight. And I didn't like it. And I was on one diet from another, from the next. And it was very hard for me to talk to my family about it. I was embarrassed. I felt always less than the others. My uncles would make fun of me. My brothers didn't know it, but sometimes they would make fun of me. And it really, really hurt. I'm a very sensitive soul. So anything that was said to me, I just pushed it down and I tried to numb it. And the only way I could numb it was through food. And I would binge and purge. That's the cycle I got into because dieting, I couldn't lose weight. Um, And I just remember, I still remember the first day I I actually, that voice took me over, took over me. Um, And I let it win because I fought it for a long time. But then I decided, no, this is it. This is what I'm going to, this is the only way I can lose weight. And this is the only way I can deal with all the issues I have. And I started binging and purging, which maybe started once a day twice a day. But as years went on, it became 
my whole day. It, my, my, my schedule is based around binging and purging 12, 13 times a day and starving in between. Yeah. I've never experienced this. So walk me through the mindset. And then as practitioners, how do we identify? There's a lot, a lot of isolation. So I had to literally eliminate everyone because I knew people knew what I was doing. Right. So first of all, it, it's obvious. I think, you know, you see somebody, I, be, I lost probably about 70, 80 pounds in 60, six, seven months. But you see somebody sitting at the table eating more than everyone else, going for seconds and thirds, and they're losing weight. It's a huge sign. But it's not about the food. And I think the problem that I had, which a lot of people have that suffer with eating disorders, is it becomes a focus on food. So my mother would, you know, she'd hide food from me. She didn't want me to go in the kitchen. So it became like the obsession became with food. It wasn't about why are you doing this? What's happening to you? What, what's, what's bothering you? The problem was the, the the food and the anger, like my, my family became so angry at me, which I understand, but it led me to isolate myself even more and feel even guiltier than I felt. Like I felt so guilty for everything I was doing. And so that just was like, you know, a dog eating its tail. I think we said that in Italian, but I don't, that makes sense in America, in English, but you no. know, and so I couldn't break that. And and so the, the most important thing, I think, if I could go back and have someone at that period, it wasn't about food. Probably if somebody would have talked to me about my feelings and my emotions and asking me what was going on inside of me at that time, maybe it would have helped, would have saved me a lot of years because it just was food. Like it became food and it was an obsession. I would, the monster inside of me, I call him the enemy at the table. He was the enemy at the table. He just took me over. And he told me how ugly I was, how fat I was, how worthless I was, that I had to hide. I didn't, I wasn't, you know, I made everybody angry and being a people pleaser, you want to make everyone happy. So you just fail at life. You suck. You're not a good at school. Just all those negative things just filled my, my head day and night. Yes. Uh, so it's ultimately a head talk. Uh, yeah. Not like you're saying, that's nothing about food. No. Food is just a symptom. Yeah. It could have been drugs. It could have been alcohol, but it was food. And there was such a disconnection between my head and my body. Like my head was, was what was commanding everything and my body didn't exist anymore. Like it just, it didn't matter how exhausted I was. I would have to get up at four in the morning and binge and purge and make a, you know, a three course meal. Then I could nap for 30 minutes and then I would have to get ready for work. So binging and purging before work. And it was just that whole cycle and being alone in it and feeling like I was crazy. and. You know, you even get to a point where you, you steal, like I be stealing money to be able to buy food. It's, it's just this whole thing that the guilt and the shame just builds up and you don't want to be honest about it. You, you try and hide it as much as you can. Yeah. Well, you flipped out of it. Yeah, I did. And you well, know, well, as, that's a success story. well, you know, and how crazy, you know, I know like I talked about the girls in the fashion magazines and I wanted to be thin like them, but one thing that kept me, you know, I, I did try suicide twice, but I didn't, obviously I'm here today, thank God. But the one thing, the only thing that lit me up in all those years was my personal style. I always had a thing for fashion. It was my way of creating who I wanted to be and not be completely hidden. And I did not let the monster inside of me take that away from me. So every day before I walked out the door, and this is what saved me, and I, I don't, I didn't know it at the time. I made sure I looked great and it wasn't to hide it or to lie to other people, but it was to tell myself if I saw myself looking okay, I was convincing myself, even though I didn't know it, that I was okay. I would look at myself in the mirror and I'd be like, oh, you look good. If I started to look sick, I wouldn't be here today. So I kept that fight and I made sure that what I was wearing is what I loved. It brought me joy and it was what in the long run saved my life. Now, from getting that to, you know, being completely cured, it was a long thing. It, it was 20 hard years. I kept it hidden from my husband. I was pregnant and my son was born starving inside of me. They had to do an emergency C-section. And I just got so tired of it, Dr. Kylie. I just, I couldn't deal with it anymore. Like I got to a point where I wanted to have a daughter and I didn't want to put her through or another child what I put my son through. And I 
this may sound really, but I, I gave my life to God and I surrendered. Surrendering, you need to have, I needed to have a higher power. Somebody could have been Buddha, whatever you call it. I but- totally agree. And that's the case with every addiction. Yeah. I mean, I'm in Utah where it is very Christian, religious, like it's culture. And it's a lot of culture. And I know a lot of, a handful of moms who have been brave enough to talk about their anorexia or their bulimia and what it did to their pregnancies and now what it's doing to them and now it's a constant fight and and does the culture help no but it literally is my husband was an addict at one point in his life addict to drugs and alcohol and sex and everything else and that comes with that lifestyle and he did the exact same thing he had to realize at the bottom of this sinking sand where he was about to pull the trigger on himself realize you know what I'm here for a reason. God put me here for a reason. I got to find it. And I have to literally just put my life into his hands because as a human being, we need someone who has stronger power. We do. Whatever, whoever source of power you're going to use, but we are humans. Yeah. And you know, I had been in and out of hospitals. I don't until before I got married. When I got married, I didn't say anything to my husband. He didn't even know I had the problem. But before that, I was in New Orleans in a hospital for almost a year. And then I went in another one. And I, you know, I never took antidepressants. That's another thing. I never, ever took one type of medicine because I was so afraid of what would happen if I did. Because I just, you know, back in the 80s, it wasn't so common, antidepressants. I think it was something very new. And I don't know how, you know, so for me, that was one thing. I wanted to find the strength within. And it came from God. Like I literally... After struggling 20 some years, I got on my knees, I cried, I prayed. And within a week, this may sound literally crazy. I stopped binging and purging. You know, I'm all about miracles. Doesn't sound crazy to me. And he did. He blessed, he did bless. It was a miracle because I have, I, that was when I was 37. I'm now 52. I have not binged and purged since there's, and I have nightmares sometimes that I do, but I, I, I haven't. And I would never go back to that lifestyle. No matter in my fifties, everything's moving south. I'm gaining weight right now, but I don't care. I will never, ever go back to that place, that dark, that dark place that I was in. And, you know, I made a promise to God when he was helping me that I wouldn't, I mean, I'm not an eating, I'm not a doctor, so I can't help. I mean, I can help by my, my message and what I've been through. But I know that I also had very big dreams and I wanted to be seen and I wanted to be on stage. I wanted, I had, I had so many things that I wanted to do, but my heating disorder was my crutch. It's what kept me hidden. It's what kept me behind the scenes. And when I said to God, I said, I promise you, I will help any woman going through maybe not an eating disorder, but who wants to be seen and heard. I will make sure that I will make her seen and heard through how I know best. And that's through style. And I can tell you, a lot of my clients that are in their 40s, they feel like they're not worthy. They they have to be hidden because they don't have the same body they did when they were in their 30s. This age thing has a really, it does, it's a really, it's really hard on women. And so I flip that around. I want women to be seen and heard and be as bold as they want to be and go after their dreams. You know, I love it. Age is just I feel so empowered just sitting here talking to you like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this too because I have similar dreams. And I always say, you know, you find that person, Tracy, if Tracy can do it, I can do it. I, like, it doesn't matter your background either, whether you're listening to this and you're thinking, you know, I do have some body dysmorphia. I do look in the mirror and see myself as a way that I shouldn't see myself. And And when you do that, you know, here's a tip on trick I've learned with my mindset is one, you just stop yourself and you say, I forgive myself and I choose love or I choose this. And and you flip it. You say, I forgive myself for one. And then two, you flip it and you say, you know what? I love this outfit on my body today. I feel so much confident in this. And if you feel like you don't have any of those outfits in your closet, Tracy, what can they do? They can absolutely contact me, leave me, DM me on Instagram. I have my website, um, www.envoguestylist, E-N-V-O-G-U-E, stylist.com. You can reach me there. You can find me on Facebook. You know, age is just a number. It's like our dress size and it should never define how we dress, look, or feel. And every woman, you know, and you're talking about flipping that message. I think another really important thing for me was having a morning routine. 
because you know what? I find that I call it the enemy. You can call it your ego. It comes in very loud in the morning. At least it did with me. And so I needed to protect myself in the morning. So the first thing that I do is obviously I pray. I thank God I'm here. I, I, I meditate for 20 minutes. I pray for whatever, 15, 20, however long it takes me. And I exercise. I don't exercise to lose weight. I exercise to strengthen my mind and my body. Then I get in the shower. I have a cold shower. I sing and I dance in the shower. So I'm getting my energy and my vibe up so high. And then when I'm doing my, putting my makeup on, I listen to a podcast that inspires me. So when I get to my wardrobe, I'm in such a high energy level that I'm going to wear something that's just going to pop and, you know, blow my socks off for that day. If we wake up frumpy and grumpy, we're going to dress to follow suit. So it's really important to have that morning routine and switch that message. God, that's so true. If we wake up grumpy and frumpy, we're going to dress like that. We're, and you're going okay, to go so through, you us through You walked us through four steps to take mm-hmm. right now to one, change your mindset and to overcome really anything, whether it be eating disorders or anything else. One, the first step, flip the message. Yeah. Flip the message that's going on in your head. Mm-hmm. Two, protect yourself. For Tracy, it was protect herself in the morning. Three, exercise. Not to lose weight. I don't even care if you're on a weight loss journey. Mm-hmm. Change exercise to I want to strengthen my mind and my body not to lose weight and watch the magic happen. And then number four, listen to words of inspiration. And for you, it was a podcast. Yeah. And definitely get rid of We got to do number five. Style. Yes, absolutely. Style yourself with confidence. Wear something you love and get rid of a scale. If you have a scale at your, in your house, get rid of it. Cause they're like, you know, that's a, that's a game that we all can play. How much do I weigh before I eat? How much do I weigh after I eat? How much do I weigh after I vomit? No, that scale, that, that's just a number. And it's like your age. It has no value whatsoever. Yeah, I've said, I've said that many times on this podcast. If you have a scale, go to the very top floor of your house, open up the window and drop it out the window and let it crash on the ground. Just make sure no one's below you. Yeah, exactly. That is... <laughs> That is not an item of furniture that you need in your house. Get rid of it. That's not a necessity at all. Okay. So we just did five steps to overcoming really anything that you're fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, can you give me one tip to spice up my wardrobe with what I already have? A really easy style formula is you take a neutral. So it could be jeans could be those khaki pants, whatever it is, something neutral, add a pop to it. So a pop is something that people will remember. So it could be a bright colored top. It could be whatever, a print, something that stands out and then add your statement accessory, whether it be a bag, earrings, you know, women forget to accessorize. This is one thing that I find accessories can change your outfit so much. You can wear the same glasses right now. Yeah. Like glasses. And it's like, Okay, Tracy's here. She knows who she is. She's confident. Yeah. And you know, you can buy, uh, these are prescription glasses, but there are websites you can buy glasses for like $4. Not that I'm into like buying a lot of stuff, but you can, you can buy those little things that can really change. So neutral pop and a statement access statement um, accessory. So it can be also the opposite. You wear a white blouse, Add a state, but add a pop of color on your bottom. So a bright, maybe a coral colored pant, whatever, something floral, and then get out your earrings, your sandals, your bag, your shoes, whatever it is. But it's an easy way to get dressed in the morning. Okay. That's something even I can do. (laughs) And it doesn't, and right. It doesn't take much effort, you know, it's simple. And that's what style is. It doesn't, we overcomplicate things and we take style way too serious. And that's where I'm in. I'm like, I don't, I want it to be fun. It should make you sparkle, shine. You should feel like, you know, it's, it's nothing that's too complicated. Don't overcomplicate it and, you know, wear what you love, not what there shoulds or shouldn'ts. Agree. Okay. I'm going to do that. One neutral, one pop and a statement accessory. And I, I love my jewelry. There you go. I don't wear it. Like, like I was, I've always found an excuse to why I don't need to wear it. 
and most of it is kids. Like if I have my necklace on, my little girl's going to pull out of her, my earrings or something. Yeah. But um, I love them and I have a whole bunch of it and I just don't wear it. So I need to pull them out. Yeah, you do. Make them my accessory. Podcast. Your next podcast, put on some earrings. Big accessories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have one more question for you, but let okay. me, let me get it back. Okay. For the women who have clothes in their closet that they no longer fit into, what is your advice? Get rid of it and never buy clothes saying when I lose five kilos or whatever it is, I'm going to wear that outfit. You, you buy only what fits you and what doesn't fit you in your wardrobe, get rid of it because it's a game we all, I've been there, I've done it. You have those skinny pants that you fit into when you're in your 30s and you, you, you try like that morning you wake up and you're like, gosh, I feel really slim today. I'm going to try on those pants and you try them on and you can't fit into them. And then you're just like, oh, you feel horrible the whole day. So you go eat your chocolate bar, you go, you do your binge thing, you know, don't get rid of them because it's a number and you don't want that. You only want what fits you. Unless, okay, during COVID, I know some people said they put on that extra COVID whatever, but even then, accept your body for what it is. You know, if you're healthy and you feel good, that is such a blessing because there are so many people in the world who are in the hospital right now who maybe are having their last breath. Do you think that they care if they had that milkshake or not? Like really, you know, they're not stressing about it. So, you know, obviously if you're, if it's a weight issue that you're too heavy, okay, then that's a different kind of issue. But as far as your clothing, wear only what, have what fits you in your wardrobe. None of that game. Amen. Even if it was two kids ago or three kids ago or four kids ago, just get rid of it and oh. be proud of who you are today. I watched a Ted talk video one time. I don't watch them very often, but I did this one time and it was about a woman who she was giving her story, of course. And she's like, I was going in to plastic surgery the next day. Cause I just had, you know, some arm stuff hanging out. And she's like, I was so cautious about it that I just wanted it removed, wanted it gone. She said, and then I remembered that my body tells a story about my life. And then she goes into, you know, my arms were able to hold, hold my babies and now they're teenagers and I can still wrap my arms around them. And she just flipped the story about every piece of her body and she canceled her appointment the next day, realizing that my body tells a story yeah. and it's a story of what I've done and overcome and accomplished. And I'm proud of it. Yeah, it's true. It's pretty cool. It is. If I think about even my C-section, you know, those are the scars, things. the stretch marks. Oh my gosh. I used to have like the tightest abs and now I have stretch marks <laughs> and it is what it is. And I'm not going to like walk around wearing bikinis because of it, but I'm not going to curse it either. I'm going to look at it and remind myself I have two beautiful kids who right. did this to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then just wait till they're teens. <laughs> yes. Okay. Tracy, I feel like you have some words of inspiration you would like to share as we conclude here. Never underestimate the power of a good outfit on a bad day. And as I said, age is just a number and it should never define how you dress, look, or feel. Never underestimate the power of a good outfit on a bad day. Even if it's, I'm telling you, you know, if there's some woman out there who's like, I can't bother getting dressed. Even if you comb your hair, put some lipstick on. You don't have to do the whole nine yards, but just take that first step. And that first step will take you to the next step and the next step and the next step, you know, and that's how it is. Just start with that lipstick and you'll be like, oh, maybe I should do my hair. Once you've got your hair done, you'll be like, wow, maybe I want to put on, you know, that's how it is. If it's too overwhelming thinking about the whole thing, just one step. All right, guys, we've talked about so much today. We've done five steps overcoming anything. We've talked about her three-step formula for boosting that attire you're wearing. And then, of course, if you have this day, you're listening to this, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to go change my outfit right now. Take a picture of yourself. Hashtag confidence. Hashtag beyond the diagnosis. Hashtag Kylie Byrne. Hashtag Tracy Jalis J Jeski, right? Yeah. J E S K I. Tag -E. us in that. J E S K E. T R A C I J E S K E. E. Okay. I wrote it down wrong. Yeah. Do it on Instagram. Tag us. Let us know what this does for you and just the flip of the mindset. That's all it takes. 
And last but not least, follow Tracy on Instagram. See you guys. Wasn't that just loads of gold? Keep the gold coming by grabbing my book on Amazon. Why are my labs normal? Go grab it. Let me know you love it and appreciate the knowledge by leaving a review, both for the book and for this podcast. Share it on your social media too. I'm here to help. Dr. Kylie.